Hi YouTube, this is BD594 and today I'm going to show you how to build your very own Persistence of Vision business card. Before I start I'd like to point out an excellent uh, Persistence of Vision business card I found on the Instructables website. The person goes by the name of Sponges. I'll provide the link below um, so you can take a look at his methods and procedures that he uses. With regards to my business card I'll be showing you an easier way to solder through hole components rather than surface mount. Here is the list of the through hole components required. Now we're looking at the schematic for the uh, business card and it requires an AT Tiny 85 microcontroller, a 10K pull up resistor, a normally open push button switch, a tilt switch, and five LEDs. Uh, the reason why I chose the AT Tiny 85 because uh, it requires a less expensive Arduino Uno to program rather than the more expensive PIC kits. In this video we're going to concentrate on building the hardware. The Arduino code will be provided so you can modify it with your own messages and upload it to your microcontroller. Okay, now we're looking at my uh, business card circuit design. Um, it is a Inkscape SVG file and it will be available for download should you decide to build your own. All you have to do is just replace my information with your information. So on the right hand side this is where the microcontroller resides and here is where the tilt switch resides and this is just a pull up resistor. Uh, if you look at it carefully the uh, microcontroller uh, is made to resemble a satellite. Uh, which is orbiting the earth and the LEDs is the information that is being beamed down to the earth um, and which represents the binary data here you see the one zero one zero one zero and then down here it's also represented uh, by the square wave here which just so happens to be in this circuit is the ground bus okay before we uh, start the build I'd like to quickly go over the uh, operation of the uh, business card Okay, right now you're looking at a prototype of my uh, business card here. I have it mounted on a DC motor and on this side is just a switch to turn it on and off and I have some nuts and bolts to counterbalance everything. So let me turn on the uh, display first and then the motor. Now if everything's set up you should see the word hello displayed. Now the issue with a business card is you have to wave the card back and forth back and forth now there's an issue with that in one direction you're going to see the message hello but when um, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse the direction of the motor here and I'll show you what's going to happen so in the other direction you'll see the word hello a mirror image of the word hello so it would be very difficult for your eye to perceive a message moving forward, backwards, forwards, backwards, up, down, up, down. Uh, in one direction the message will be legible in the other direction uh, it will be a mirror image. So it would be next to impossible for your uh, eyes to distinguish what the message is. So that is why we incorporate a tilt switch. So when you move the card in one direction, the display is on and displaying the message. And then when you move the card in the opposite direction, then the display turns off. Okay, before you um, print your uh, circuit design, you have to ensure you're printing the mirror image of the circuit. Um, and a good way just to make sure it's the mirror image is if you look at the text and everything is backwards then that's a good sign so this is the way it should look before you print it uh, now that you're happy with your uh, circuit design and what you want to do is you want to make a hard copy um, what I like to use and I've been very very successful with it is just a sheet of magazine uh, a sheet of paper from a magazine so you just basically want to tape it onto an 8 by 11 piece of paper and I like to use painters tape so there we go that'll hold it in place now it's ready for printing 
Now that you have your 8x11 sheet with a piece of glossy paper taped to the front of it, uh, just insert it into the uh, manual feed. And here's the uh, printout. As you can see, it was a close call, but it still made it on the page. So the next step is to uh, cut out the, uh, well this is the circuit board I'm using here. I got a bunch of them already pre-cut. And what I'm going to do next is just cut out the uh, circuit. So I'm going to use a, um, a knife here and a ruler to cut out one of the uh, patterns here. Okay, and still have my fingers, and there's our uh, pattern we'll be using. Um, before I apply the uh, glossy paper printout to the board, I'd like to clean it uh, one more time. You could either use 99% rubbing alcohol or acid tone. And in this case, I'll use uh, acid tone. Just be careful with this stuff, it's flammable. And if you have any cuts on your hand, you'll know in a second. So there we go. One nice clean board ready to go. Okay, now it's time to uh, apply the uh, glossy paper circuit printout to the circuit board We're using scotch tape. I guess I'm a little off center here. There we go. Let's see if I can do this now. Again, try not to touch the board. See that? I didn't even have to measure it. Did this so many times. Okay, one side. Whoops, there we go. Now for the other side. There you go. Trim the edges. Now the tape should keep that pretty secure. You don't want it to move around. Okay, now we're going to start with the uh, toner transfer. Uh, this works 95% of the time for me. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, here's our board with the uh, glossy paper. I'm going to heat up the back of the board with a clothes iron for one minute. Okay, now I'm going to pause the video. Okay, now the board is sufficiently heated. Now, uh, of course, it sticks. Now, without burning myself, I'm going to pass it through the laminator 15 times. That's one. It is hot. Two. Okay, now I'm going to pause the video. Okay, 15. So now what we're going to do is when the board comes out, and when it comes out, there we go. Now the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm with the clothes iron, it's still hot. I'm going to heat the board one last time, copper facing up uh, for one minute. And there we go. Of course it's going to stick. There we go. Now we have the uh, soapy water ready to go. And it's a good thing to unplug everything and shut it off. Move it out of the work area. Again, the board's still hot. 
And what I'm going to do, a little action shot for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the tape on the side of the board. So here we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit for five minutes. Okay, it's been in there for a little over five minutes now. And now I'm going to remove the paper. Let's just get the corner lifted. There we go. And here we go. Well, so far, so good. Let's keep going here. All right. Helps to have nails, but I don't. Okay. And let me see, am I still centered with the camera? Okay. I don't have any fingernails, but they're good enough for this. Okay. There we go. Another successful board. Now the last step is to uh, dip the uh, copper board and put it into a ferric chloride bath. Uh, I like to use a small container um, or a container that's just a little bit bigger than the circuit board. That way I don't have to use that much ferric chloride. So here we go, I'm just going to pour a little bit in. There we go, just enough to cover the board, like that. And then uh, just got to agitate it for a while and then eventually the uh, excessive copper will dissolve into the solution. Okay, now it's time to uh, remove the board. There we go. So, uh, next stage is to clean it with uh, running water. And let's rinse it. There, now you can, uh, you can see the board's a lot better now that the uh, etching has all been removed. So, let me just rinse it. Now the next step is to uh, take the steel wool and remove the uh, the toner resist. There you go. And underneath we have the nice shiny copper. See? So let me get back to this. Now we're ready for assembly. Um, here I have all the through hole components. Uh, I bent the leads so I can solder them onto the surface of the board. Um, I pre tinned everything uh, just to make uh, soldering a lot easier. So uh, let's get started.
So, looks good. I'll uh, just solder on the battery and uh, we're all set for testing. Alright, I uh, glued the uh, battery holder onto the back and uh, pre-drilled the holes. I didn't want to show you that because it's pretty boring stuff. So I just got to solder on the connector and we are done. Okay, just completed the uh, battery holder installation and I installed a uh, CR2032 coin cell battery. It's about, uh, I think it's 3 volts. So let's test it here. So I push the switch. The LEDs are on. Let me see, can you see that? Let me bring it closer to the camera. Okay, LEDs are on. Tilt switch, off, on, off, on. So we're all set for testing. Let's give it a shot. Okay, we're ready for the final test. Due to the slow shutter speed of the camera, you may or may not see the message, but let's go. You should see the word smile. I'll do it a couple more times. I can see the message. I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you decide to make your own card, please feel free to contact me for any questions you may have. Thank you.